Oh my god. We just got a rainbow Nergagante egg. One of my favorite elder dragons. And a monster I've been incredibly excited to use in Monster Hunter Stories 2. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to get your own Nergagante eggs. And you can do this before you get into high rank. Nergagante is a powerhouse of a monster. It's got the riding actions of Roar and Mega Breaker. So if you encountered any of those rocks you can't break, Nergagante is going to be a great one for that. Now, it's also a non-elemental monster, but you can turn it into an element if you so desire, but it really shines as a non-elemental creature. Now, Nergagante has some pretty impressive stats. It is a Rarity 7 monster of the power type with quick growth. You can find it in the Turga habitat, and it has a very high recovery rate for a few specific reasons. Also, high HP, speed, and critical rate. Now, when we get into the stats here, the elemental stats are off the charts, especially when it comes to non-elemental damage. This thing is going to be a monster. Now, we have a bunch of pretty useful genes on here. We've got the all resist gene, which is pretty nice. Salt in the wound plus XL, which uh, increases damage done to enemies with abnormal statuses. So if you're running a status build on your character or something like that, this could be particularly useful for that. Uh, we've also got the anti-seal XL gene, which comes in handy for certain things. Soul kinship XL is one thing that I like right now a lot, which has your kinship gauge fill up super fast. This doesn't say super fast, but it should. <laughs> then we got the head-to-head -head XL gene as well. Although not as useful as it was in previous games because you're rarely doing head-to-head -head now because they seem to target everyone else but your monsty nowadays. Um, and then we've also got the heroics XL gene on here, uh, which greatly boosts attack at 50 HP or less. But we also have the self-heal large, and I believe self-heal extra large, which I have not unlocked yet. But what this does is it allows your monster to heal at the end of each turn. And with the extra large version, that's a lot. Now we will be getting into how to make Nergagante an OP creature, but first and foremost, we got to get into actually getting one. So, I've got a rare den right here. And where we need to go to is you need to have defeated Nergagante in the main story. Once you do that, you can then go to the Turga Volcano Base. And once you're inside of the Turgo Volcano Base, you're going to look for rare dens. Now, we've just found one here. And once you spawn a rare den, I highly recommend just saving at the Catastan. Do not fast or do not fast travel to it. Walk to it and save. Create a new save point for yourself because the Nergi eggs are going to be quite rare. And what you want to do is just continuously reload that save until you pull a Nergagante egg from one of these rare dens. Now, as I've mentioned, these eggs can be quite rare. But with some luck, you should be able to get yourself one. Let's see if we got here. I'm really hoping for another rainbow one, but I'll settle for a gold if possible. I've gone through about maybe six rare dens and I've gotten two Nergagante eggs so far. Which I guess really isn't too bad of a ratio, but we're going to be waking up this Bracadillo soon and I don't want to deal with that. Come on, baby. That's a Bracadillo egg. Now, what's great about this save game process is if you don't find a Nergagante egg, or if you don't find a Nergagante egg with the genes that you want on it, you can actually just reload that save and re-farm up that den until you do get the eggs that you want. Uh, so let's open up this Nergi egg and see what kind of genes we got out of this bad boy. It is a rainbow egg, so I mean, chances are it's gonna be good. Look at our baby boy. Oh, he's beautiful. And, ooh, what do we get on here? We got Inflict Rate Up, so slightly increases the normal status effect. Salt in the Wound, extra large. Increases damage done to enemies with abnormal statuses by a good amount. And Panacea Large, which is not the best moves ever. Now, since we got a garbage Nergagante, we just got to reload that save and start farming up these high rank dens again, or high rank rare dens. Now, I know I said high rank rare dens, but... 
you can get this in low rank too. As I mentioned before, all you need to do is have defeated it in the main story and you can come back to this area. I know I'm currently farming it up in high rank, but you do not need to be in high rank to get this. I just want to clear that up so there's no misconceptions. Oh, we got ourselves a gold egg. And you know what? Rainbow doesn't necessarily guarantee we have better genes than a, than a rainbow egg or gold egg. You know what I'm trying to say. So you know what? I'm gonna take it. Oh yeah, this Nergagante came with a much better skill, which is all elemental boost XL, which greatly boosts all elemental defenses. So if you're going for some defense stuff, that one here is pretty good. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the skill I was looking for, Self Heal XL, which recovers a great amount of HP at the end of each, tur each turn. My goal is to make like an unkillable Nergagante. Now, thankfully, this Self Heal gene is also elementless, which is going to help our overall build. So let's get into the rite of channeling here a little bit. So after a couple hours of farming, I finally got the majority of the genes that I wanted transferred over to Fergie here, which is our wonderful Nergagante. And I think it's doing pretty good. I haven't gotten a non-elemental attack boost XL yet, so we're still quite a bit lower in our attack values than we otherwise would be. But at level 49, uh, we are already at 387 and we don't have all of our bingos out. And that's, uh, there's a couple different reasons for that. Like right now, our bingos are sitting at 130 non-elemental. We could technically get 20% more if we want, uh, but we also have a 20% into the power bingo. So when we're using our power moves, we've got a total of an increase of 50% damage, which is not bad. Uh, but it's definitely going to get higher. So really all we need to do is decide whether or not we want to keep Dragon Eater and Vicious XL on here. I really like both of these genes and I just got this one maxed out. I'm going to show you why I really like it here in a second. Uh, but mainly we have uh, the non-elemental attack boost, which is going to be XL. We've got Ruinous Tackle on here, which is a move that the monster comes with. It does heavy non-elemental damage to one enemy. We could probably change this out if we want to, since we already have another move called Calamity Smash, which deals massive non-elemental damage to all enemies. It lowers our defense, but it also auto-recovers HP for three turns, which when we combine that with our uh, Cell Feel XL gene, and our uh, Dragon Eater, we can literally make Nergagante almost unkillable. We've also got, also got Health Boost XL on here, which we're going to be stacking. And then we've got the Vicious XL gene, which I think I'm going to swap out. Um, this substantially increases head-to-head -head damage, which is kind of nice. But I also really, really like another skill, which comes on Astalos and a few others. And that is called a Dancer XL which increases speed when at full HP. It also greatly boosts our attack and defense. Unfortunately, this will once again not give us a elemental bingo, but I think it'll be something really good. Um, and I'm gonna probably put that into Nergagante right now. So I really wanted to experiment with Nergagante on this. Traditionally, you would wanna just go for an element and like power bingo on here. Um, but I, I didn't do that this time. We have max HP now at 405 at level 49, attack of 392, which is pretty darn good. But I also have the Dancer XL level 2 on here, uh, the Dragon Eater, which these two are basically messing up our bingos, uh, which is fine because I think it's going to offset any of the downsides, especially with Dancer XL. I think we'll end up doing about just as much damage, if not more anyways, without having those bingos. And then we'll have basically infinite health. All right, it is time to test this out. Uh, Nergi wants to use Dragon Eater right now, and you know what? I'm going to let him do that because I just want to see how much damage he's going to do and how much he's going to heal himself with the level 3 or whatever it is, Dragon Eater now. This uses speed attacks, so I got kind of riggedy wrecked there. Oh my god, these are high rank monsters that we're fighting. So it does 280-something damage. We healed ourselves for 71, then auto-healed for 31. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. Now we don't have a counter for this particular monster, so we can go into monsters. We have Ruinous Strike. You can even put a tech move on here if you want, so then you could use Nergagante for literally everything, and that might actually be a really good idea to do. Uh, but let's see how much damage this even goes. And we should regenerate some of our HP at the end, not all of it. 
because we auto heal a total of 35 from our auto heal gene. Uh, so then we'll have to go back here, use his skills, and do Dragon Eater. That'll get us back up to full health. And then, yeah, we're going to use Tech here to counter the Ivory Laggy. And I think this is going to be a really, really, really good combination. Especially once I can get enough Kinship to use his other move, which is going to keep him at full health pretty much all the time. I think we have enough Kinship for it now. And that move is called Calamity Smash, but we don't have enough Kinship for it yet, but we will. There we go. Now we have enough Kinship for the Calamity Smash. We're already at full health. I want to see how much damage this does. A full health Calamity Smash. And then we're just going to regenerate our health throughout the rest of the fight for, for, for three turns. So 611 damage without a crit. We heal ourselves for 116 each turn. That is ridiculous. So we want to use a speed attack now, and we can do that with Ruinous Strike. And then we'll go a speed attack here. And see how much damage this does. 909, baby. So now we've got full health, and our kinship attack is up too, which is really nice. Because now we can see what a full health dancered kinship attack will do. We'll ride... We'll use the kinship attack. And it does... 1,178. Not too bad. But you can see here how this combination gets a little OP. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'll see you all in the next one.